Hi, this is Ren. This is Casey. And this is All Walks of Film. And we're doing another Ghostbusters episode. Oh my god, can't we just leave it alone? Just no. leave it alone, you guys. It was good, you guys-ish, sort of. <laughs> well, I, I actually really want to bring this article to attention, because besides the fact that it's much more well-written than I would expect from The Hollywood Reporter. It brings up some very specific points about the movement surrounding this movie. So with no further ado... Box Office Analysis. Why the Ghostbusters reboot may haunt Sony. Written by Pamela McClintock. The big-budget franchise comedy opened to an estimated $46 million in North America. A problematic start for a movie with a net production of $144 million. During box office press calls on Sunday morning, Sony executives were in full spin mode as they declared Paul Feig's all-female Ghostbusters reboot a triumph, pointing out the $46 million opening was the biggest launch for a live-action comedy since Pitch Perfect 2 took in $69 million in May 2015. Which I would like to take a moment to point out that there is a really huge monetary difference between $46 million and almost $70 million. What do you mean the biggest sense then? Yeah, also Pitch Perfect isn't a known franchise you have one other well, movie to go from yeah but also that was a sequel and it still did that much better just saying we are ecstatic with this opening we have successfully restarted an important brand josh greenstein president of worldwide marketing and distribution told the hollywood reporter which is why china can't fucking watch this movie mm-hmm but box office analysis and rival studios are skeptical that Sony has indeed relaunched the storied franchise, considering $46 million is a problematic start for a movie with a net production budget of $144 million. Rebates and tax incentives brought it down from $154 million. Ideally, they say, it should have opened to $60 million or more. And just real quick, because there has been so much argument about this with Batman v Superman of how much did it really cost and how much should have gotten back. And oh, compared to other movies, this was a really great opening, but compared to the movie that it was and how much money was spent, it wasn't really that great. This movie cost so much more money to make than most other films in the genre, any sort of live action comedy or any of like its peers of like say Bridesmaids or Pitch Perfect, those were all made significantly cheaper. But here we have very specific numbers. $144 million in production budget brought down because of, you know, tax rebates, and then later in the article they point out that it took so much more money for um for marketing. And Sony even said that the break even number is $300 million. That's before they start turning a profit. $300 million? $300 million. They spent more money on marketing than they ever spent on budget. Like, for the actual making of the movie. Which, considering all the hype and press and buzz and controversy, that shit was totally manufactured, dude. They were paying a lot of people to write a lot of shit. Also, they're if it costs that much. Jesus Christ. Also, they're trying to sell this movie to little girls, and I doubt little girls are going to want to get the Ghostbusters toys because they'll just want the Disney princess shit. Like, do you think a lot of girls will go out and get these Ghostbusters figures? I'm not a very good judge on that because I was growing up, I was like, I want the Legos, and everyone would give me brat dolls. And I'm like, but mm, I don't like dolls. I'm not a great judge, but I will say that if I was a little girl right now, I would want Rey from Star Wars before I'd ever want a fucking Ghostbuster. Feig's previous female skewing comedies, including Bridesmaids and The Heat, which were both better movies, definitely better, <laughs> were extraordinarily successful thanks to incredible multiples as they held on week after week at the box office. Which multiples are people who have seen it once, but then keep going over and over and over again. And some people have gone to see this over and over again for opening weekend. 
But I don't think that they're going to, like, even the people who are like, I'm going to support it because of politics. I don't think they're going to keep going back week after week. But they cost a fraction of what Ghostbusters did. Mm -hmm. And they are standalone offerings, not a VFX-driven franchise comedy designed to revive a 30-year-old marquee film series. When factoring marketing costs, the price tag for promoting a summer tentpole globally can be upward to $150 million. Ghostbusters may have to earn $375 million to $400 million worldwide to break even for Sony and the partner Village Roadshow Pictures. That means it needs to do sizable business overseas. Since it could top out at 130 million range domestically. Sony insiders counter that the break even number is 300 million. And there you go, straight from the source. That is the actual company saying, this is how much it's going to take for us to turn a profit. That is their number that they released to the world is 300 million. And that's interesting because Batman v Superman never actually released that. But that, that was they my did. point. They did. But Batman v Superman, there was all the speculation because we knew how much production budget was, but there was no real accounting for the marketing budget. Which was where a lot of the controversy of, oh, did it do well? Did it not do well? And at the end, the consensus was it did meh, okay. Now, was that revealed through a Sony leak or... This says Sony Insider, so that's all I gotta say. I'm okay. pretty sure that's somebody who works for the company now. Gotcha. I didn't know if that was part of the leak or Yeah, because you can not. tell a lot from the leaks. Right. Overseas, the jury is still out. Ghostbusters debuted in only a few major markets this weekend, earning nineteen million with first place finishes in two major English speaking markets. The UK, 6.1 million, and Australia, 3.7 million. Some analysts caution that a comedy doesn't travel as well as other genres, and that is fair. Comedy mm -hmm. is different in various countries. Right. And China is not allowing Ghostbusters into the country. Yeah, and the thing about the UK, 6.1 million figure doesn't surprise me at all. There was an Emma Watson film that came out recently that made... $65 in the entire UK. That's about the price of three tickets, maybe four. And that was its entire run over the entire UK. And it's because they're having really bad economic problems right now. It's hard to afford a ticket price, especially when you can just wait for it to come out later for a substantially, you know, smaller price tag. Right. I mean, so many people watch movies on Redbox now that it's mm -hmm. hard to pull asses in seats, especially when tickets at the movie theater are one price. You know, yep. a movie on Redbox is like, what, $2? Yeah, maybe. And that's assuming you don't keep it for forever. So, I mean, $2, $20. Big difference, especially yeah. when you're counting your pennies. Yeah. And people want to see a good movie in the theaters. They're not going to go out and watch a movie that they know to be bad. And granted, you know, our opinions on movies are a little bit more sophisticated than the average viewer. Not to toot my own horn, uh, but I, I like we watch films. We don't just go to the movie theater and say, I'll see that one. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. The, okay. There, there yeah, was actually we, we a poll. don't go and see like whatever just happens to be playing because it's playing. Yeah, I see what you mean. There was actually a poll. I think it was on Slash Film where they said that the majority of people that go to the movie theaters don't know what they're watching before they get to the movie theater. They just arrive at the movie theater and then pick whatever's available. I don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. I, there's there's too many bad movies out there, and plus we keep ourselves informed. If I'm going to see a bad movie, I'd rather pay less money for it and have the option to pause. When Tom Rothman replaced Amy Pascal as chief of Sony's movie studio in 2015, he shaved at least $15 million off the Ghostbusters budget. But the risk remained high. So this was supposed to cost another $15 million on top of that? What the fuck, man? Really? Why does this movie have to cost 
315 million dollars and it still looks that bad too i mean even if you don't think the cgi was that bad because i didn't really think it was that terrible like when people were bitching about the cgi in the trailers i was like I mean, it doesn't look good, but it doesn't. It's not the worst thing ever. And to be but, fair, we didn't see it in 3D, which might have been the upcharge. Um, I doubt that, it. I highly doubt it. There was like that one scene with Slimer and his, his girlfriend. His, oh, I, I was gonna say his love buddy, but <laughs> we're in the car, um, and it goes up in the air, but. That was it. There was nothing else that was really 3D about it. The Stay Puft Marshmallow Man and the floats. Oh, there was a like squished on the the ground scene, I guess. But as it well wasn't, as the... It wasn't like they made the whole movie with that in mind. They had like two or three gimmicks in the whole film. It was about as necessary to see that in 3D as Step Up 3D. But that implies you watch Step Up 1 and 2. Oh, I did not watch Step Up 1 and 2. I watched So You Think You Can Dance, which has the same choreographers and dancers attached to it. Okay. It was painful. I didn't enjoy it very much. Yeah, that's kind of how I feel with any movie with a large cast of attractive women. I'm just like, this movie is going to suck. That's just the truth. I have yet to see a movie where there's a large cast of really attractive women drawing attention to the fact that they're attractive women that has been any good. The only thing I can think of is Snow White and the Huntsman and Sex in the City. That's like it. And I can't think to of my knowledge, example. those are not good. And no, but I can't think of who's any other the primary example. character of Sex in the City. She looks like a fucking horse. Well, I don't get what other movies you're talking about. That like, doesn't seem to be like a thing. Like Charlie's Angels and... Oh. All I'm going to say about Charlie's Angels is that Lucy Liu left quite an impression on my sexuality. The barracuda scene with the leather suit and the whip. I thought the movie was so stupid <laughs> oh, that I kind of... Oh, the movie was stupid, but I was like eight and I was like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> You know what also made me depressed? The fact that that movie is stupid, and this new Ghostbusters movie is stupid, there's a common thread. Bill Murray's in both of them. Bill As like Murray's a shoe-in cameo. It. Okay, then yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I will watch Charlie's Angels a hundred times before I'll watch Ghostbusters again. The fucking sumo scene? Are you fucking serious? I've seen Charlie's Angels 1 and 2, and I will say either one of them is more fun oh yeah it's more fun there's there's a clear Better story Better songs if nothing else i can just like close my eyes and listen to the soundtrack if nothing else but weren't you the one who said that the new ghostbusters soundtrack was awesome the score but <laughs> if you compare the fucking fallout boy theme song and the other fucking cover song that they did to you know blink 182 then i'm gonna take that one <laughs> My favorite thing is at the very beginning of the movie, they play the Ghostbusters theme, and like while it's playing, it just like fades out, but it doesn't fade out naturally. It's just no. like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The sound mixing in that in that was really atrocious. Yeah, and this is supposed to be a major film. That's that's like something you would expect from a TV show. Yeah, that that really was what it felt like. It it kind of did feel like. I'm trying to think of what era of television it would be if it was a TV show. What era of television? Yeah. Probably like early 2000s. I don't think so. Early or 2000s was a much, was quality wise much better than this movie. Okay. <sighs> In terms of writing and, and CGI and effects and story. Okay, what early about. Early 2000s was way, way better than this. What about like mid 2000s like right when the writer strike happened and they were like really struggling oh to yeah, put are things you talking together. about like heroes season two i i would i would compare this to like the later seasons of heroes okay that's fair enough yeah i know sony is crowning about it being a great opening for a comedy but the entire ghostbusters legacy is what's at stake here and it's not looking good this was supposed to be a blockbuster, he continues. Sony definitively did not launch a franchise, and seemingly they might be the only ones that didn't know it. I know it's been a tough road for them, and I feel for them. 
I mean, here's the thing. You launched the trailer, which got a lot of negative reviews, and instead of saying, okay, trust us, we have a good movie out here, which was part of it, Mm -hmm. instead of just sticking to that, they were like, no, it's the male misogynist nerds, you know, we're going to bring these up and make that our narrative. Because it also fits in with the movie. It does. They it's, wrote it it's, into the fucking film. And so when you watch the movie, it kind of confirms that. So if that's your mentality, if if you're somebody who thinks that like males are out to get you, this movie is kind of for you in a sort of <laughs> way. Like it affirms that weird mentality that divides genders. And while there is patriarchy still... And while there is gender divide, it's not as prominent as it was in the past. The 80s was a lot more misogynist. Ghostbusters, the original movie, wasn't. And you can listen to our review on that. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, movies like Porky's were. But... (laughs) I will say that they should have known that this Gamergate marketing technique wasn't going to work. Because... Look at Gamergate. Oh, well, we're going to bash the gaming scene. We're going to bash the male nerds. And all of these articles and all of these reviews and all of these videos are going to get so many hits that we make money. But when we actually try to promote products, when we actually try to recommend things, when we try to actually push something for people to buy to support the cause, nobody fucking does it. For the past two years, Sony and Feig have had to ward off criticism from some outspoken male fans. Only male fans. We know this for a fact. It was the only the male fans. Yeah. I don't yeah, know how there no were male female, fans before the movie came out. No female Ghostbuster fans exist. Well, no, there were totally female fans of Ghostbusters. It's just they had zero problem with this, clearly, because they see, you know, people with vagina on the screens and they're instantly happy. What other women can't complain about women in movies? That's that's just no. You're silly. Also, I've already seen women cosplay as Ghostbusters. All you got to do to cosplay as Ghostbusters is wear the Ghostbusters uniform. Anyone can be a Ghostbuster, which would have been a much that would have been a much better. Coveralls. It's easy. No, but that would have been a much better message. Like because we talked about this before in one of our reviews how like the message is so mean-spirited that would have been a much better message that would have been more progressive if it's just like anyone can be a ghostbuster but it's not what this they movie tried does. to shoehorn that in at the very end with uh kevin's character where he became a ghostbuster here's the thing kevin becomes an ex- more accepted Ghostbuster than Leslie Jones. What the fuck? Yeah, And he can't even up. pick up a goddamn phone. phone. Yeah, exactly. And I will... S- I've been thinking about this, and I'm like, it is sexist the way this movie treats men, but it's also kind of sexist to have three female scientists who are all about as dumb as Kevin. That's kind of sexist, where it's like all of your female scientists are all dumb as driveway gravel. And let's not forget that it's 2016, but we still can't have the black character be a scientist. No, she can't be a scientist and she can't be accepted by the other people in the group. Also, I thought it was hilarious how the original marketing for the first trailer said 30 years ago, four scientists. And then fans brought it up that there were three scientists and one guy who was hired. And they were like, oh, 30 years ago, four friends. Well, it was a dumb thing for them to do anyway because that was that was really misleading. It was, it was totally like the Godzilla 14 trailers where it looked like it was going to be Brian Cranston versus Godzilla and then you watch the movie and you're like, why did you market a fake movie? Godzilla's in the movie for eight minutes. There, I spoiled the movie for you if you oh, haven't no. seen it. Well, it's okay. There, there's only one Godzilla. Shin Godzilla. For the past two years, Sony and Feig have had to ward off criticism from some outspoken male fans who were unhappy with Feig's decision to go with a female cast headed by Melissa McCarthy, Leslie Jones, Kate McKinnon, and Kristen Wiig as ghoul chasers who were famously played by Bill Murray, Ernie Hudson, Harold Ramis, and Dan Aykroyd in Ivan Reitman's 1984 classic film, 
Reitman produced the update alongside Pascal. Which really glosses over a lot of problems with that. But also the other thing is, I still have yet to meet anyone who had a problem with the casting. I'm sure that there are people online somewhere, but that is not a major thing. Even the people who hated this movie and weren't like, oh, the cast sucked. That's just not a... That's just not this big thing that I've seen. In a recent interview with THR, Rothman insisted that the online bashing was the greatest thing that had ever happened. Are you kidding me? We're in a national debate, thank you. Can we please get some haters to say stupid things? There you fucking go. Right there. Come on. They were trying to bank off of people talking shit about the movie. But here's the thing. When people talk shit about a movie... They're usually not going to go fucking see it. That's not true. People will hate watch stuff. People will hate watch stuff. And they did, and it still came out to that low. All the people who wanted to see it to support women and all the people who wanted to go hate watch it all went, and it still completely tanked. I'm sure there were some people who bootlegged it. When we were at the bar, this one guy was like, oh, yeah, I bootlegged it. I liked it. I'd go pay for it. Oh, really? I didn't know that it was bootleggable yet. Okay. And that was opening night. It's the internet. That makes a lot of sense, though. At the same time, Sony made sure to court males in its marketing campaign, creating special promos that aired on ABC during the NBA Finals. Get it? Court males? Because it's a basketball court? It's a better joke than they made in the movie. And that's also hilarious because then they go and see the movie and it's basically like, fuck you, men. Fuck you. Fuck yeah. you. And then but, it's like, oh, why, did, why didn't why did this movie make money? Huh. Wait, I wonder. but I know you're going to say that, but this was really the biggest point in this article I wanted to bring up. Keep reading. For real. It's impossible to determine whether the naysayers hurt the movie because the opening weekend demographics were inconclusive. Men didn't exactly stay away. But women didn't show up in the compensatory numbers either. In fact, while Ghostbusters didn't play like a chick flick in North America, it didn't perform like an all-audience summer tenfold either. Instead, it landed somewhere in between. Females made up about 56% of the audience versus 75% or more for a Pitch Perfect or Bridesmaids, while more than 60% of the audience was over the age of 25. That's what I wanted to fucking address. For all the people who are like, oh, this movie made internet man babies cry. And, oh, well, you know, it, it sucks because all these fucking meninists were refused to go see it. The ratio is 56 to 44%. That's pretty damn close to equal numbers. This movie did not stave away men, and it didn't bring women out either, just because of, oh, you know, boobs. It it had no effect. Like, all of this fucking controversy had no effect on who fucking went to go see it. And the people who saw it, you know, thought it... A lot of people who saw it thought it was okay. I haven't heard glowing reviews of the movie. No, the best is, oh, well, it's fun to leave it alone. But I've seen both men and women both say that they enjoyed it and hated it. Yeah. I've, this is not I've a never gender heard, thing. I've never heard a single review that didn't criticize it in some way. Oh, yeah. Even the people who like, loved it were just like, oh, but it doesn't compare to, like, Paul Feig's other stuff, even. Yeah. I, in our last review that we did, we compared it to a Paul Feig film. We weren't even talking... I mean, we did compare it to the Ghostbusters, but, Yeah, but, but we like, did that later. Like, when we went in to go see it, we were really just comparing it to... Bridesmaids. Like, that was pretty much it. That was the standard that we went in to go see it. And I think that was true for most people. And it's it still fails on that level. It's not nearly as interesting or well-written or funny or subversive or progressive even as Bridesmaids. If foreign grosses don't pick up the slack, this will go down as another big disappointment for Sony, who based... Their entire summer on this brand, says Paul. Whoops. <laughs> wow. Uh, you really need to, like, get on that Uncharted movie. <laughs> yeah. Or, like, do do something, because... $300 million before they make a single dime in profit. Ghostbusters did earn generally good reviews, 
but audiences gave it a B plus cinema score instead of a resounding A. I don't get what that last part was because like a lot of movies get B plus, like even good movies. Yeah. So like the whole like, oh, it's not a resounding A. I mean, like most blockbusters don't get the A review. So, so far out of the $300 million they've spent, they still need $215 million more dollars before they start breaking a profit. I wish people could see the look on your face right now. You look like saddened and disturbed. I'm not saddened and disturbed. <laughs> I mean, part of me is sad that, like, Sony... Has to really stoop to this level. Yeah, and, like, I'm I'm afraid of my counsel. <laughs> because, like, I'm loyal to the Sony PlayStation brand. Oh, and yeah, and they've just, they've just come in second place to Nintendo now. So they're not even on really? top with that. No. Yeah, in terms of gaming, yes. Nintendo what? just came out over Sony. What, just because of Pokemon Go? Is that it? I'm pretty sure, yes. Yeah. Okay, so it's made... Hang on. It's made a little bit more money than I had said so far. It's made a little less than $122.5 million. Do you think they're going to try to keep it in the theater longer to create more revenue for them did that work with batman v superman okay so it, right now they have 177.5 million that they need to collect worldwide that's not even domestic they've only made 75 million domestic and they open with 46 million and let's see they lost out to secret life of pets's second weekend there wasn't even anything else that opened that weekend that was their big Time in the Sun, and then this past weekend, there was... Well, it was um, sandwiched between two it was, summer temple films. One was a kid film, which it's not Finding Dory, but it was a big film that was really right. hyped up. But then this past weekend, there was Star Trek Beyond, and then the next weekend is The Born Legacy, and then the weekend after that is Suicide Squad. I don't know what the point of keeping it in theaters longer is going to be because it's it's going to be stalled out for a few weeks just based on the other bigger releases that are coming out. Also, why did you release it in the summer? It, it's Competing summer, with those. Well, it's a big summer action film. It should be doing about as well as those movies. I mean, right now, I think it would have been smarter for them to release it in October to try to market the Halloween crowd. Oh, well, duh. Yeah, Since that's a good point. Ghostbusters oftentimes is played during Halloween. Well, yeah, that's also a good point because what do they have to compete with? Like, really, really shitty Halloween movies that everyone's seen a thousand times already. Like, And also, they could sell with. those fucking costumes knowing that it's a fucking shitty movie. Okay, some people thought it was well, okay. Well, no, because you, like, you could buy... Because so many people are willing to buy costumes of shit they haven't seen yet. So you're right, a lot of people will probably buy costumes and merchandise before they see the movie for Halloween. Yeah, yeah. I guarantee you a lot of people bought the Ghostbusters products thinking that it was going to be a great movie. And I'm not going to judge, but I will say that based on everything that I've heard from the Ghostbusters movie, people came in with preconceived notions and when it didn't meet those exactly, they just kind of accepted and we're just like, but all female cast, yeah. But there's better movies that are all female cast. I don't think that there's been a major blockbuster action movie with an all female cast, other than like Charlie's Angels, which is the action comedy thing. Yeah, those I mean, movies were reviewed horribly. Oh, were they? I, I was too young when they came out. I don't know how the reviews were. I just I saw the movies. Well, I remember I saw it in the theater. I was on a date too, and I was oh, yeah. yeah, I was, I I was on a double was, date, and I just thought because it was one of those things that was just like always on TV. You know, I was actually just thinking about Ghostbusters today, and I was I was thinking about like how shitty the characters are written and how they have like no skill set and they don't really do a lot in the movie. And I was like, you know, you could just write this movie without Aaron, and nothing would change. Actually, you could write this movie without Aaron and Abby and nothing would change. And you could write it without Holtzman, too. And then I thought about it and I was like, this movie could have literally combined all four characters into one person. 
and you wouldn't have to change the writing almost at all, and it still would not be a fully developed character. Or someone who could really be talented enough to be a Ghostbuster. Because what, what is the skill set between the four of them? You have one person who makes gadgets off screen, and you have one person who knows history about New York. And Which, how, how useful is that when you have Google? Well, to be fair, that was the most useful thing between the four of them, was her information about shit that's happened in New York. But you're right. She literally could have been replaced with a smartphone. And there would have been no difference. And Aaron and Abby do what? Like, what skills do they have? Physics that she never uses. What does Abby even do? What is her special skill set? Uh, she. What does she ever do? Like, what is she even supposed to do? She, like... <laughs> she. <laughs> no, seriously, name a skill that she actually has. She manages the lab... She keeps Holtzman in check. That's terrible. That's so stupid. You need an entire character to do that? For Holtzman, kind of. <laughs> She's not very good at it. Holtzman still set the lab on fire. Holtzman, also, I, I've been seeing this thing online that it's like, oh, each woman has their own story arc and their own story about wanting to be a Ghostbuster. Name what is one Holtzman's... story arc in the movie. Well, what is Holtzman's story okay, arc? Okay, there's a story arc at the very beginning where Kristen Wiig, what's her character's name? Because Aaron. I totally Okay, Aaron. I've hammered these into my head. That's the only reason I even know. Okay, so Aaron... Says that she doesn't believe in ghosts and then she had that. Right. She refuted her experience and then she has that experience with the ghosts in the library. Well, and but, then but she's the like, thing, like, I mean, not the library, but the, the fucking it was historical. The yeah. yeah. Well, here's the thing. As lame as it is, if you spell it out. Okay. Aaron saw a ghost when she was a little kid and that's why she wants to bust ghosts. Abby has a friend who saw a ki- who saw ghosts when they were a kid and wants to help her out. So she wants to bust ghosts. But why do they want to bust ghosts? I don't fucking know. <laughs> like, like I said, it's shitty, but like, Patty Are saw ghosts, ghosts in the menace? subway. I don't know. They, they sploosh on people. I don't fucking know. Um, and then Patty saw a ghost in the subway, and that's why she wants to be a ghostbuster. Holtzman was hired to do paranormal investigation, and she can make shit, but we don't know how or why. She doesn't have a backstory. She doesn't have a reason. She doesn't have a discernible personality besides making silly faces. You can't even say that she likes, like, oh, well, there's that scene where she danced around in the lab. She likes music. If you can't tell the difference between DeBarge and Devo, you don't like music. You don't listen to In the Rhythm of the Night and say, oh, I thought that was Devo. No. Nuh-uh. Fuck you, movie. As a music lover, I am offended. Not that there's anything wrong with either one of them. Those are actually both very good bands. I'm just saying they're nothing alike. They don't even have similar names. Part of me thinks that the movie thought that was funny. Yeah, that was totally supposed to be a joke, but I don't know why. That was a joke about how stupid a woman... That's that's my thing about this movie, is that, like, okay, so the men are all, you know, stupid and woman-hating, and the women are all stupid... And, like, that's it. Like, there's no intelligent character in the entire movie. Like, that is every character's primary characteristic is that they're dumb. And it's a joke. Everyone's super dumb. Get it? It's funny. (laughs) It's funny because they're all so dumb and useless. Yeah, intelligent women can also be stupid. It's not sexist, you guys. Because there's a bunch of them. So it's not sexist. So I just wanted to bring this article up to point out... A lot of stuff about the box office numbers that is spelled out and are, there are sources on, but mostly to get at that point that the viewing audience is a lot closer to even than people really want to admit. Um, I actually kind of want to bring up this stupid meme that I saw online. Alright, so like this was this is something I've been saying all over Facebook. Listen. Ghostbusters passes every test that I can think of for the treatment of women in media. Number one, the Bechdel test. All of the women have a lot of conversations about things other than men, like ghosts and cadavers and technobabble. 
Oh my god, like, they can't even get the first point without being like, they just kind of spurt out total nonsense, but at least it's not about men. And what about their entire fucking conversation about Patrick Swayze? Patrick Swayze, Kevin. Yeah, like, all their conversations about how hot Kevin is. Really? I don't think he's hot. Oh, but I'm just gonna go, like, grind on his booty without his permission. Melissa McCarthy and the guy with wontons. Well, that wasn't really about the fact that he was a man. Rowan. They don't really talk about him like he's a man either in any sort of like sexual way. Because uh, right. my impression of the Bechtel test is that when they're talking about men, they're either talking about their codependence or their sexual want or desire of them. I feel like if it's not about that, it doesn't count. Like Tree of Life passes the Bechtel test because there's no way that talking about your dead kid is really comparable to, ooh, I think my boss is hot. Should I fuck him or should I not? Okay, this one makes me laugh. The sexy lamp test. None of the women can be replaced by a sexy lamp and have the plot remain intact. I disagree with that completely. I do too, because that's literally what I was just saying. Like, Patty can be, actually, pretty much all of them, except for Holtzman, could literally be replaced with an iPhone and there would be no difference. I mean, you would still need to have, like, two characters interacting for the film not to be about, like, one person making things and then fighting ghosts which sounds much more saying, interesting like, yeah than that sounds like a lot better if it was just one chick with a lot of different personality qualities who did actually build shit and we could see how that worked a little bit and you know filled in gaps of her information with her fucking iphone this movie was afraid of montages for whatever reason but, i don't but they what. did manage to squeeze in two scenes of them testing out their technology in the exact same way and having the exact same jokes and based on the Why fact that it was a four-hour movie, apparently, mm-hmm. you you couldn't fucking condense those into one scene, like yeah. one montage scene, and just make the scene shorter so that you can incorporate like more character development and well, story according- that apparently your four-hour cut had, which I highly fucking doubt. Well, I highly doubt that too, but this was an extension of the montage from the first movie, like the original Ghostbuster movie. Which is, it fails. I'm but just saying that was, actually, the, that was the attempt. But they were actually, like, going out and, and like, catching stuff. ghosts and stuff like they that. They were actually, like, doing things, which is something that the women in this movie just, like, couldn't do. They couldn't do things from, like, almost the entire film. What, they catch one ghost? They catch one ghost one time, and then somehow they can save the entire city of New York from, hun- like, dozens and hundreds of ghosts. And then, later on in the film... Apparently, they don't even have to catch ghosts because they can just fucking obliterate them with their fists. Oh, they can just kill ghosts. Why not? Like, at least the Ghostbusters never killed the ghost. Uh, I don't feel that bad because they were dead, but... They did with Gozer. That's one. And And also, Gozer was like a demon god. Those were like demigods. That doesn't count. Those aren't ghosts. Those are like deities. When someone asks you, are you a god, God, you you say say yes! yes. (laughs) Okay, so yeah, it fails the sexy lamp test or the iPhone test. The Mako Mori test. All the women have a narrative arc about busting ghosts and gaining respect, with the separate arc of Aaron and Abby regaining their friendship, and neither arc supports a man's story. No, the tiny, tiny arc story arc of Aaron and Abby regaining their friendship that spans an entire three scenes in a two-hour movie is the only story arc in the film. Like I said before, Holtzman has no story arc. She has no narrative arc. She is just there to hand people plot devices, and and that's all she does. Oh, and how did they do this? By fighting off a man who became a fucking ghost. Well, yeah, but again, it's not really like... Well, no, because that is like oppressive shitlord, so yeah, you're right. (laughs) But this part is my favorite part. The Furiosa test. The movie pissed off man babies on the internet. First of all, Mad Max Fury Road pissed off one male misogynist douche overlord, and he said he wasn't going to go see the movie, and that was one fucking dude. Who gives a fuck? There was not a huge onslaught of men not seeing Fury Road. Like, that's just not a thing that fucking happened. Every single fucking article I saw only had one citation. It was this one same fucking dude from Return of Kings. That's one guy. Even if he had, like, his supporters, that's not a movement. Also, like, 
Return of Kings isn't even a men's rights act. Oh, site. no, but I mean, they're men, whatever. Like, if you're talking about man babies, they didn't say men's rights groups or meninists or whatever. But you're right, they're not men's rights activist group. They're probably closer to MGTOW than anything else. Um, but then okay, to I go love to this, this part. movie. Wait, wait, wait. But then to go to this movie, 56 to 44 ratio of women to men. This movie did not scare off the man babies of the internet. Men went to go see it almost as much as women went to go see it. It didn't make a fucking difference. Okay, this part is priceless. I love this part. Basically, this movie is a gift. That is pathetic. If really, like, this is your idea of good, strong female writing. Yeah, also, also, oh, it like... Passes these three, it doesn't even pass any of these. It literally fails all four of them, for starters. Well, no, it doesn't fail the Bechtel test, but it, it fails three of four of them anyways. But it sucks. It doesn't matter if it passes or fails a test. It sucks. Also, this this movie is really great for feminism because you couldn't get a female director. You nope. couldn't get female writers. Nope. Granted, most of your production team was females, but production teams usually are female like especially with like costuming and production design well production design is usually mixed but it's it's balanced it's more balanced than like yeah, directing I mean, like, and writing you had a female like producer who drove this shit into the ground well the male producer came in and took 15 million dollars away from the movie well yeah that's that's a good point and I, I'm, like, really curious where that $15 million, million dollars would have gone. gone. Yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe it was the VFX budget, but I highly doubt it. It looked like there was a lot of money into it. It's just that the designs were terrible. I think maybe this is why I had a different opinion about the CGI than a lot of people. I don't think it was bad quality rendering. I don't think it was bad quality CGI. It's just the look they were going for, like, their vision sucked. Well, it was like super saturated. and Bright neon colors and I mean I don't know how a CGI team really could have made it look any better. I mean, you could have gotten the people from fucking Avatar and maybe it would have looked better, but I mean, for what it was, the CGI was decent, but the designs were garbage. I, like, I didn't like any of the designs for the inventions either, but I'm, I'm trying to think of like ghosts of any kind that I thought were like interesting but yeah i mean i guess like my favorite ones were the most generic looking and i didn't really like them they they just weren't horrendous you know those were the ones that were just meh like that's really the best at the best parts of this movie are just meh and the worst parts are upsetting and offensive like really a lot of the people who liked it i think don't really pay attention to the movie. I really don't think it's going to make its money back. I hope it doesn't, because I don't want to continue to see, like, these really passive, aggressive, no, outright aggressive, like... No, I would say it's passive-aggressive. But yeah. really, it's regressive, which I think is the bigger problem. I'm sick of this movement of, like, oh, it doesn't matter if it sucks as long as, like, there's you know social justice and i don't even mean that in like a derogatory way or like in a bad way but just like oh just because we have you know just because we can check this little box for this movie then oh it's great so don't say anything about it because at least there's a good reason no it's a piece of crap you know if you want to get to a point of equality you should be able to judge everything equally also, I would love to see, like, a feminist movie, like, a modern feminist movie, like, with women and all that kind of stuff that isn't, like, men suck! Fuck you! Fuck you! You're cool! Fuck you. Mulan's like that. Mulan is a great movie that's about a woman battling this patriarchy that is very not anti-men at all. There is one evil man in that movie, and there is bad old rules that are being disproven but other than Shan Yu the Huns which is a you know faceless amorphic blob um and that one obnoxious dude with the really really skinny guy other than like those two people all the men are 
good people in the movie. You know, there needs to be more shit like that. But right. with more women, like, you can have more than one chick in a movie. You should, but, I mean, not if they're all gonna suck. There's no point if they're all gonna suck. All right. Let us know what you think. Thanks for listening.